name is Sydney Yi. Uh, my medium is acrylic. I uh, paint on canvas and I also paint on thin board. I'm a retired teacher. I taught at several high schools, but mostly at Lahaina Luna, about 25 years teaching high school art. I think in terms of art, uh, by working with my students in the creative process, it uh, helped me in my own work. Going back to my experience in, uh, in uh, college when I was on sabbatical leave, uh, this Professor Ron Kowalki gave us an assignment to explore our cultural color. And for me, Chinese had the color of red and gold was probably uh, symbolic of what a Chinese culture would be like, that, that feeling of red and gold in its um, brightness and liveliness. And so I started exploring Chinese themes. I went to Chinatown and did a lot of uh, work in that, in that place. I get motivated by picking subjects that uh, interests me at that point in time. And it could be a variety of things, like uh, recently I explored a dream that I had. I feel that by doing things on a personal level, I always tell my students the most personal is the most universal. And by, by doing personal subjects, I think I get for me, I get to the uh, meat of the, of the uh, subject. For example, I'm talking about things that are personal. I explored um, some of my family background. My mother is a big influence in my life. And this is a, a picture of her when she was uh, young and just had a baby, her first child. And I like to tell people that it's me because it, it uh, makes a direct connection with my mom, but actually it's my brother in the picture. But I say it's, it symbolizes myself being young and being under the nurturing of my mom who loves children. And, um, but at some point I had to strike out on my own and I had to break away to become my own person. So that struggle to find my own identity was a very difficult process and it took a long time. And so that's the silhouette of me upside down when everything was in turmoil. And then it rotates here, 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 and finally I'm straight up. And um, you notice that I'm in green, which is a positive state and I'm my own person. Um, I did a series of uh, driftwood paintings and I just picked that driftwood being a symbol for um, our pr uh, process of being young and vital and getting old and, and not so active. And so the driftwood kind of represents that. So I did a, a bunch of driftwood to in, in that um, genre. But in this picture, there's a little difference. The driftwood is represented in more of an organic or uh, animal form. So uh, being a, an animal rather than a driftwood in, in, um, in your, your, your uh, referral to it, it's um, in your reference to the driftwood, the animal form is more alive. Right? And so the driftwood is becoming animal-like because uh, life goes on and even when you're old, you still are vital and you still have something to offer society and you still have challenges to meet and um, 
you never stop learning and you never stop growing. And this is a kind of a reminder to that. Hopefully, uh, my work um, is a little different in each piece. As I try to um, do something that is something that I haven't explored previously. And uh, I believe that uh, by doing something a little different every time I, I do a piece of art, it, um, it challenges me to get into different territories and grow in knowledge and grow in understanding of the whole process. And um, it seems like um, there's never going to be an end to what I can learn. My name is Kirk Kurokawa. I paint with oils on board. Born here on Maui, uh, yeah, born and raised here and went to school in California, college. I've been painting all my life. Uh, really, I actually, my mother has sent me to uh, art classes since I was a little kid. So I've been practicing some kind of art all my life, but painting pro professionally probably since 2001. When high school, I was actually taking a lot of architecture type of classes and that was my plan, was to be an architect. Then just one day I just figured like, oh, I'm so tired of painting these straight lines. And then my senior year I decided to take some art classes, you know, real art classes. And since then I just kind of decided that's where I might want to go and decided to go to art school and um, that was that. My kids have taught me to appreciate those simple things in life. Um, I talk about that in my statement anyway, being a father and those simple things in life, I, I think I, I'm able to see it more clearly now that I have kids because I see them and I'm constantly trying to take pictures of them so I can capture those moments so I can keep them and remember them. Um, and I guess that's what brings me back to the paintings is that my hope is that they tell the stories of these simple moments. Uh, and hopefully, that, my hope is that people actually will look at that and they can get that and will maybe inspire them to take time and remember those important things that make, uh, make life wonderful. If it strikes my fancy, I will take a picture. And somehow I'll use that and kind of uh, think about it and make up stories in my head of what might be happening or where my concept of that painting comes from is that story that I'm thinking of. Um, and it's usually something simple and enjoyable and uh, it's just yeah it's just an enjoyable kind of moment that you can reflect on and feel good about and I got to travel some uh, and I've been went to Japan for a little while and I think I learned a lot there about that culture and how it affects me and how I grew up and I think that's where a lot of my paintings come from. It's uh, that simplicity of like a woodblock print and so not necessarily simplicity, but even the complexity of the uh, compositions is what intrigues me. Uh, compositions especially, it intrigues me. And that's in my paintings, I try to push that a little bit farther, sometimes a little bit too uncomfortable sometimes for myself, but I try to work and work with it and make it a successful painting. I guess I just take chances, I feel like. You know, you learn about how to make a good composition in art school, and it's not that complicated. You can make it complicated, um, but 
I guess I try to push it uh, by breaking the rules a little bit. I break the rules, but then I try to manipulate that, uh, the painting to make it work with line and color uh, and space. And that's basically what I do. I create tension sometimes with the composition, but I try to make it work with all the other elements to make it still pleasing to the view viewer's eye, but still making and pushing the limits of it to really make it contemporary. And I think that's uh, my work because it's figurative, it kind of, it's easy to, to fit it into maybe a more traditional uh, category. But I do feel like with my compositions, it can stand with a contemporary uh, painting, other contemporary paintings. With this painting, I, it's along the same lines where it's uh, thinking about simple moments. It's uh, a simple capture of a friend of mine that has doing the Japanese dance at the time. And she's very a perfectionist, similar to the way I am. And I can relate to that, that you, and uh, that you try to do the best you can at what you do all the time. And that's basically what I try to do. And it was part of that, this painting is to do that. And pushing the composition along with it is kind of difficult with having just one figure. Uh, and I've created that with, I alleviated some of that with this kind of faint circular uh, shape that kind of mimics, I feel like it mimics uh, Japanese wood block print, kind of having that shape inside of a print that kind of carries your eye through the painting, even if it's simple, very simple. You know, I really try to do my best at my work. And I guess, I guess if you go back and look at my paintings, I would like people to see that it's almost just a reflection of what I've gone through in my life. I think, especially with viewpoints, they've seen me from the beginning as an artist till now. They've seen me grow over the years and hopefully they see my paintings grow along with that. And I guess I want people to see that I've always tried to do the best I can with my paintings and hopefully I've grown over the years and hopefully I keep on growing with the years to come. My name is Jonathan Yukio Clark, uh, I'm 26, and um, I guess I would consider myself a mixed media painter slash printmaker. I feel like all of my work, whether it's my own studio work or um, graphic design or teaching, I think it all kind of functions as a complement to each other. Um, and they're all things that I think are ultimately related to my work as a studio artist. I've always enjoyed doing art. I kind of did it as a pastime. Um, did a lot of sketching and drawing all through, um, ever since I was a kid through high school. And then um, towards the latter half of my high school experience got more serious about art. Um, I started taking classes and then um, was able to take lessons from um, Caleb O'Connor who was at the time residing on Maui and he gave me a very important uh, foundation I think in draftsmanship and in oil painting and so when I entered the major the painting major in my junior year of college I um, did a few pieces that were just strictly oils um, but then also started to tap into mixed media and I think a lot of that was um, a result of my experiences in the first year, first two years of college. 
uh, where I'd been exposed to these other materials and they were fascinating and I realized there was so much um, there was so much that I could learn from these me these mediums that I hadn't worked in and then when I returned to Maui after graduating um, and that was in 2009 I sort of shifted my focus because I was no longer um, in a conversation with an audience that didn't know Hawaii intimately because I was back in Hawaii. Um, so the work became sort of, a, I would say, a more honest um, investigation of history, mythology, narrative, folk tales, elements that we've inherited and um, sort of entities that I wanted to reinterpret through my own personal heritage. I spent um, a total of 13 months um, in Japan from the spring of 2012 till the spring of 2013. And I was enrolled at Kyoto Seika University studying printmaking and that was my first really um, intensive study of that medium. What I noticed in Japan was a real affinity for the changes in the seasons. There was a lot of appreciation for very subtle nuances and Every moment throughout the year was a cause for celebration. Um, so there was like flowers come into bloom and then within an instant they're gone. And so there's always sort of this mix of joy and celebration in combination with almost a sense of mourning or loss. Um, because everyone knows that each moment throughout the year is something that's only going to last for an instant. So screening ended up being I would say a really natural transition for me um, because it is more graphic. Um, it has a lot of potential to layer on top of different surfaces and I think it was sort of an element of my work that I had been wanting to incorporate that just hadn't had the facilities to do so until I actually studied that medium. So um, this series is um, a collection of compositions that would be my reinterpretations of Hanafuda cards. And Hanafuda cards are um, sort of a traditional Japanese playing card. Since there are 12 in total, it corresponds to a different month of the year. And it also corresponds with a specific floral motif um, based upon whatever um, flower, tree um, is in, or sort of in season during that month. And I've created 12 compositions for this show, one composition per month or per floral motif. The compositions, there's a real, there's a beauty to them, but there's also a sort of sense of simplicity and a use of negative space. Um, and I think that went really well hand in hand with um, sort of the aesthetic that I was bringing to, to these prints. I really tried to approach each composition differently. There, some are um, more digital, where I've ac actually created the entire composition digitally and then uh, translated that into print. Some are created through um, more like painted methods um, in order to create my screens and designs. Um, and then a number of them are just a mix of both. So like, so the, the digital aspects of these pieces are sort of that same process where I would kind of brainstorm a composition on the computer and then figure out my use of color, how many colors, um, how many layers and what colors go in which sequence. And then I'll actually break them up into um, the layers because I have to print one color at a time. This is um, the ume or plum blossom. Um, so this piece um, would be associated with February, and that's when the plum comes into bloom in Japan. Um, I wanted this piece to be more graphic, um, to have this kind of repeated, um, very consistent uh, motif throughout the entire piece. Um, the original composition of the uh, card itself does have a green bird on a branch, and I wanted to kind of play with that, but in this case actually, um, inserted the amakihi, um, so a Hawaiian honey creeper, into the composition in combination with the plum blossom. Um, and then moving from February, this would be March 
this is the, these are the cherry blossoms, the sakura. Um, because these are two very distinct, but um, like recognizable floral motifs that happen right next to each other, I wanted them to convey very different um, emotions, very different um, aesthetics. So I wanted the sakura to be more organic, um, to be um, a little more subdued. There's a lot of very um, quiet mark making in these areas. Um, and I also wanted it to have a sense of spontaneity. So this piece, um, this is the iris. This uh, is uh, for the month of May. Um, and this element right here is a poetry slip. There are um, quite a few of those poetry slip compositions within the deck of the Hanafuda cards. Um, for this one, I really liked that sort of simple but very distinct shape, and I wanted it to kind of to change the composition as it moves through. Um, I also wanted this piece to be more graphic, to be um, crisp, and I really liked playing with the negative space, especially in some of these areas right here. Um, and wanted wanted it to kind of be a uh, prelude to summer, so I wanted the, there to be really vibrant pops of color um, in the form of the, that purple of the iris and some of that really intense, almost citrus yellow. Um, but I also wanted it to have sort of a darkened, um, a darkened aesthetics as if it was still awakening from um, the slumber of early spring, winter. A lot of my motifs and um, sort of sense of aesthetics are very traditional in nature, but um, a lot of my work is about um, sort of individual heritage and a very fluid and ever-changing multicultural context. I came to art kind of late in my life, so uh, I feel like I've had to work at it maybe a little harder than other people do because I got such a late start. I started off with watercolor and I found out that that's not really my, my medium that I wanted to work in and uh, changed to printmaking, which was the love of my life, yeah. Uh, after a few years of that, I had to get out of that because it was creating some health problems for me. So I began to do ceramics, but that works too slow for the way my mind works. And I worked in acrylics for a while, then worked in encaustics for several years. And uh, I recently uh, began to do some bookbinding, which I, I, I really, really love. As one walks through this show, particularly in the encaustic pieces, uh, it's possible to see many arched forms. These forms are, uh, a hey, catenary. Uh, catenary comes from the uh, Latin catena, meaning chain. A catenary arch is formed when the two ends of a chain are allowed to uh, have the middle be suspended in a natural arch. And I began to use this as a, as a form because it interested me very much. Uh, the catenary arch is often used in building kilns and uh, uh, architectural uses, suspension bridges and such as that. In a, uh, in a painting like Susanna and the Elders, you will see that there are two catenary arches in this. One uh, with the form hanging down and one with it pointing up. Uh, so what happened here was on the larger form, the chain, the ends of the chain were suspended further apart than on the smaller form. Catenaries for me, uh, it can be used to separate things. Thinking about uh, what Rothko and, and Gottlieb said when they were painting the, uh, out of the New York school, they said that all art is timeless. And some of these themes that I work with, I believe are timeless. 
I hope that you can enjoy what you see inside here and maybe having a little understanding of the catenary arch will will uh, increase your enjoyment. I'm, a, I'm an artist who loves color and I think that you'll particularly see that in my uh, monotypes and mono prints where I'm uh, working with only the primary colors as I lay down the layers of color over the top of each other to create a range uh, of hues. And, and hopefully the things that touch me as I, as I create my work through this process that other people might be able to touch at some level you know, with those, those same things. So I'm just really grateful to be asked to be a part of this show. I'm grateful for the, uh, for the work that we've done over the past year, you know, the uh, uh, looking in depth at some of these things that are associated with the, with the world of art and trying to build, as, as, as we've talked about, this visual literacy, you know, to be introduced to it and then to continue to build on it and, and to grow with it and to expand, yeah.